today I have with me a small collection of paddles. I'm going to go through all of them. I'm going to discuss the types of wood, types of finishes, their design, why this one, why that one, so on and so forth. Open Air Outdoors. So what I'm going to cover today are the two basic paddles. The beaver tail and the otter tail. The 101 variations in between the two is 100% relevant to everything I'm going to cover here today. Uh, what I won't cover are uh, what I call specialty paddles. Things like bench shaft paddles. Those paddles were designed for racing. They are the most efficient at moving water, but they are designed for forward stroke only, which means they don't lend themselves very well for backcountry canoe tripping or just simply a long day on the water paddling. Another paddle I won't cover is um, those very large square bladed paddles with a T handle. Those are also a specialty paddle. They're, they're designed for the whitewater guys. And those paddles are very large to capture a massive amount of water, which is essential for maneuvering around rocks, fallen trees, and other variations that the whitewater guys have to navigate through when they're going through the rapids. Those paddles, if you use them for backcountry tripping, basically by the end of the day you're going to be wiped out and your shoulders are going to feel like they're going to fall off just because they're simply too large and they grab too much water at one time. Let's start with um, why beaver tail versus otter tail, vice versa. Uh, most typically the beaver tail is used for shallow water paddling. So if you're paddling shallow rivers and a lot of marshlands, the beaver tail is better because you're not going to bottom out. Well, every time you take a stroke, an outer tail paddle is much longer and an outer tail will often hit the bottom. So that's the advantage with the beaver tail. It is a shorter paddle, but it is a much wider blade. And what that translates to is it moves the water that's on top. On the surface water is what you're moving versus the otter tail which moves the water that's below the surface. The otter tail is usually more preferred for lake travel and deep water. The advantage to the otter tail is because of its slender design. Every time you take a plunge into the water, that paddle goes in gradually and it doesn't shock load your shoulders. Every time you take a stroke, the, the stress on your body is very light and gradual versus a beaver tail with a wide blade. Every time you take a stroke, it's a shock load to your shoulders. And that transpires to on a long day on the water, you could be a little bit more tired using the beaver tail. Having that said, um, the beaver tail is a little bit better in the sense that you don't have to switch paddles. You can certainly paddle deep water with a beaver tail, which an otter tail, you cannot paddle shallow waters with an otter tail. Ultimately, in the end, it's a matter of preference. Let's start with the paddle I have in my hand right now. This is a uh, laminated otter tail. You can see this uh, three lamination. Cherry wood, uh, lacquered, and has a resin tip. What does that all mean? Well, this is a manufactured paddle. Manufactured in the sense that it comes from a factory. Unlike a handcrafted paddle, which is built by an artisan. What are the attributes of here? What's, what's the pros and cons? Let's go that way. The pros are this is a little bit more affordable because it's manufactured, it's produced in high numbers, and usually that translates to a better price point. 
the lamination why laminated one one key feature about the lamination is less wood waste pieces of wood that would normally be sent out for scrap can now be utilized to actually create a paddle it is also lacquered and the lacquer is quite simply durability uh, longer life there's no maintenance uh, you could this paddle could be paddled for literally years before uh, you can even think of sanding it down and giving it a fresh coat of lacquer another uh, attribute about this paddle the resin tip that is infused on the tip and that is a really is a good feature to have simply because when you put your paddle down and you're shoving off from the shoreline your tip doesn't wear out and it doesn't wear off the uh, lacquer as quick which in turn uh, will degrade your paddle so going towards the cons of this paddle like I mentioned it can delaminate also when you're getting a paddle that's manufactured a high production grain orientation is not always taken in consideration um, paddles that is properly built is much like an axe handle you want your grain orientation to be correct or else the paddle can just simply snap on you at any given time the other thing is usually the handles can be less comfortable you don't have a whole lot of options on the shape the size uh, how thick it is and so on when you're dealing with a manufactured paddle and the handle can be the difference between uh, getting cramps and being comfortable at the end of a long day out on the water paddling okay the next paddle we're going to cover this beaver tail this particular paddle is another manufactured paddle mass production um, it is cheap to buy this thing literally approximately sixty dollars and you're paddling uh, birch wood lacquered uh, does not have the resin tip um, where do I start with this how about I start with I hate this paddle it is a cheap paddle 100% but you know what cheap doesn't matter um, I carried this paddle for a long time with me and I carried it as a backup paddle whenever my preferred paddle of an otter tail was uh, too long I would pull this guy out also if something should happen I accidentally break a paddle well you got a backup those are the pros to a paddle like this the cons is this thing has no ergonomics whatsoever that grip is super thin which means you're you're making a fist and which translates to uh, cramping at the end of the day super thin it just doesn't have a lot of structure to it this thing flexes like a slinky when I have to really dig in with this paddle, I can feel it flexing in the water. Truly is not a paddle that I like paddling whatsoever. I use it for a very specific purpose and that's it. And not to mention that being that it's birch wood, um, aesthetically pleasing, about the same as looking at a slice of bread. All right, enough of this thing. Okay, now we covered both the outer tail and the beaver tail in uh, mass production or manufactured paddles. So now let's move on to what I would prefer, 
anybody would prefer. The handcrafted paddles. What I have here, I'm going to start off with this alder tail. It is uh, black walnut in material. Uh, this is an oiled finish, not lacquered. And this is a custom paddle, meaning I put in an order for this paddle and the blade shape is to what I prefer. Aside from being an otter tail, the blade shape is thinner at the tip than it is at the shoulder. This is a design that I prefer because when you paddle this paddle, when you plunge that paddle in the water, it is very quiet. It's very gradual going into the water. This is my most favorite paddle. And the, manu the maker of this paddle, this is his claim to fame, is this handle. A very bulbous handle. He claims that this is the most comfortable paddle you will ever use. And he's right. This is my all-time favorite paddle. So all of the pros with this paddle. Let's start with oiled finish. Number one, if you're prone to blisters, an oiled finish would be very beneficial to you. Oiled finish is a very smooth paddle and it is very nice on the hands. If, you're, if you get blisters, look for an oiled finish. The other attribute about this paddle, although it's black walnut, and black walnut is a much uh, denser wood than a uh, cherry paddle, for example, like the very first paddle I used, it's a super lightweight paddle because it's a cherry wood, and cherry is lightweight. Although this black walnut is much heavier, the maker of this paddle managed to make this paddle super light because he carved it out extremely thin. Now, how do you accomplish a thin paddle with good structure and good strength? Well, it's this right here. If you look right here at the neck and throat area, there's a very high ridge. Right here. There's like a backbone built into that paddle. This is something that can only be achieved from a handcrafted paddle. A paddle that is subjected to large drum sanders and belt sanders, it is impossible to have this massive spine giving this paddle extreme rigidity. This paddle is both strong, rigid, and comfortable. No wonder it's my favorite. So what are the cons to this paddle? Well, it requires maintenance. Because it's an oiled paddle, depending on how much paddling you do, you're going to have to oil it frequently. Personally, I'm a big time weekend warrior, so I do a lot of paddling. Weekend after weekend after weekend, I'm out there, I'm paddling. And this paddle, I will re-oil this paddle as many as six times throughout the paddle season. Is it a big deal? Not for me, not whatsoever. It does not bother me whatsoever to have to break out some oil and to oil this thing. Um, the other con to a paddle like this is to produce such a paddle, you need a very large piece of wood. There is a lot of waste in making a paddle that is a solid wood paddle, which is what this is. It's a solid wood, no lamination. So that's another con about a paddle like this, is it requires a large blank. Let's cover another handcrafted paddle. What I have is another beaver tail. And uh, this beaver tail is actually a little bit more reminiscent of a um, Voyager style paddle. And what I mean by that is it is nice and wide at the bottom, typical beaver tail, but that width ca carries quite far up to the shoulder area. Now this paddle is a uh, sugar maple for material. And this paddle is a little bit uh, different in the sense that it has something about it that you don't see very often. This camera may pick it up, but there's a difference in color between here and here. 
you can clearly see a line here. Well, maybe the camera won't be so clear, but there's a line right here. What that is, is the blade of this paddle is lacquered, but the shaft is oiled. The blade gets extra durability from the lacquered finish, but the handle is oiled. Going back to what I said earlier, preventing blisters. This shaft is silky smooth. Now this paddle, um, just quickly, I was very fortunate last year, I was able to participate in an auction which was a fundraiser where all the proceeds was donated. And this paddle happened to be the 60 year anniversary for this paddle maker. Now obviously you notice this crazy pattern design on here and what that is is called fractal burn. And what that is, is electricity is, a, is conducted through the paddle and it burns, the electricity burns the wood. What is done after that is it's cleaned up and it is filled with a resin epoxy. Truly giving this paddle a unique look. Obviously this can only come from handcrafted paddle. The handle on this thing is super wide. The whole palm of your hand is covered. After long days of paddling, it's great that you can, you don't have to actually grip. You can sometimes just put your wrist right on that wide, extra wide grip. And then when you paddle, you just push like that. These are some of the attributes you can get from a handcrafted paddle. Um, the downside to these kinds of things, well, they command a price. Some people would take a paddle like this and just hang it on the wall and use it as a conversation piece. Um, personally, I prefer to use it. There really truly is something nice about paddling, a 100% unique paddle when you're out enjoying your paddle out in the back country. Now the beaver tail itself, what is the con for this paddle? The con for this paddle is you splash yourself. Beaver tails will do that. Every time you plunge into the water, you tend to hit that water a little bit noisier and you can splash yourself. Listen, I don't profess to be an expert at any of this. I'm simply a guy that's been paddling flat waters for 40 years. And every year I'm being asked questions about paddles. And there's one more paddle I have not touched upon. And that is the kayak paddle. Every year I get individual who will approach me and ask me. And the question is, can I use a kayak paddle with a traditional canoe? The answer, absolutely yes you can. No different as you can eat your french fries with a spoon.